Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. And we have a treat for you kids. Not only is it Whiskey Month, right? We're kicking off Whiskey Month. It is. This one's for the ladies. This is Belvini 17 year double wood. That's right, oh, I said it. All right. Double, double wood. wood. It is. That's right. Oh, just we're getting crazy <laughs> later. <laughs> right on the show. Damn. This is a you great one. Sorry, I couldn't hold back. But yes. I've never had it, and it's one that I've I've had all uh, you know most of all the other balconies that are commercially available. Yeah. I've not had this one yet, so I don't mean to insult you, but um, I usually have double wood every morning. Uh, well, I've yeah. not had that whiskey. Yeah, let me rephrase. <laughs> I, I hold one while I'm peeing. The other one I hold like a cup of coffee. I ain't playing. <laughs> yeah, it's already August seventh, and oh my, it, and we know what that means. It is Scotch whiskey month mm-hmm. here on the Whiskey Roundtable. And I know you are super excited. I'm always excited for Scotch whiskey. (laughs) Single malt Scotch whiskey. Did I did I hear a rumor that uh, that no good Chris is going to be here next weekend? Yes, we Christopher Snyder uh, will be here next week. One of my good friends, and uh, he's also quite a fan of single malt Scotch. In fact, he's the one that uh, introduced me to it back when we were. Just out of college. So, so my question is, um, you're not letting him sleep over at your house, are you? No, no, we got him a separate place. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> out, out by the garbage can? No. The garage. The garage. That's good. That's a good spot for him. We got a no, pool and a pond. We got a pool and a pond. The uh, lovely Laura <laughs> is going to be with him, so no, we couldn't do that. All right. Well, hey, listen. Well, she can stay wherever. Yeah. But, you know, Chris. You know. Chris, we have a pond over here. You're more than welcome to. You can hold the hose, if you know what I mean. Huh? But uh, oh yeah, oh my! So very much looking forward to that. And That's going to uh, be fun. He's always a good time. He is fun. A nice guy. Very good guy. I like that guy. I remember when we first were doing our uh, when we had the uh, coming back from uh, last year and all the stuff that we did with all the systems and all the new systems and everything else, and uh, we did a whole trial show, and it was a great show. But Karen, forget to hit. Karen forgot to hit the uh, start button. <laughs> I forgot to hit, uh, yeah, streaming. So our, yeah, our practice. We lost right. the whole thing. Well, but and then it's he all will, in here. He's also going to be back later. We're not sure exactly when. Much later, I hope. He will be back to uh, <laughs> when we do our episode on the Whiskey Rebellion. So yeah, that's he and I are going to talk about that. Awesome. So. I, I think we should just do the whole show around the well, Whiskey I'm, Rebellion. I'm going to do a Whiskey Wizard on that. So yeah. And then we'll we'll have some discussion. So yeah, it should be. And fun. a good Whiskey Wizard tonight for sure. Yes. So we got that to look forward to. So. Which is nice. Mm-hmm. How's everybody doing? What's anything new? I'm doing good. And hey, I, you know, we got Joe Boo right up front and center. All right. At 13 runs last night, man. Oh, Woo! I love it. We, boy, did we need that. Yeah, you're not kidding. Because after Wait. that series, when we had, what was it, with Minnesota, we had like one run here in this game. Uh, one I, we run had three there. runs in the whole series. I don't I was know. Like, it, was, it was kind of pathetic. But. Joe Boo came alive last night. You can almost get away with that when you got the pitching staff we have, but you still got to score some runs. You know? Yeah, they need some help. So, but Amen. they've been fantastic between uh, Bieber and Carrasco, and uh, good thing. Thanks for Hosey. He's he's uh, holding his weight. And oh yeah, yeah, two home got, runs. Yeah, it's always see. contagious when guys get hot. So, hopefully that will continue uh, tonight. Awesome. So. Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Awesome. So, Big G, you said you're a little off today. I am what, off what's, today. What's doing? Just a lot going on, man. Just trying to get my shit together. So, it's uh, it's uh, finalization of a lot of things for me. Uh, all good. And uh, just, you know, a lot of paperwork and a lot of, uh, why is that dog barking? Because someone's here. So, uh, busy, busy, worky, busy, worky. Busy, busy, wow. worky, worky. So, we have a guest today. Uh, Dick Brandt, how are you today, bro? Got somebody in the audience. You know where the gun is up there next to the door, right? Gotcha. All right, I might have to send you up there to take care of that dog. But uh, but do it outside so I don't want no blood on the carpet. Oh, but God. But anyway. Um, He's kidding. He's kidding. But uh, anyway, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just a little off today. I've been running all day. Uh, I <gasps> went to the office early, and uh, it just, uh, just was busy and just running and... I was, you know, three different counties today. So. so tell them what happened when you went to Lowe's today. So I go to Lowe's today to pick up some stuff. I've got to hear this. And and it was like everywhere I went was a traffic jam. I mean, everywhere I went was a freaking traffic jam. 
And uh, so I'm like, Jesus, I mean, usually I can go to Lowe's and back in like, you know, 40 minutes total, you know. I was, so, I had to wait to get checked out, and that, that took like 20 minutes, and because the guy in front of me was arguing over $3 for a friggin' plant. But anyway, oh, you know. You gotta love that. So, next thing I know, I hear sirens, I see ambulance pulling in, I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna see some real shit here. <laughs> So I'm like, you know, trying to hurry up and get checked out because I want to go see what's happening, you know. So I see this ambulance as I cash out. I'm walking out to the parking lot. This ambulance parks right behind my car. And uh, the hell's going on up there? <laughs> Is there a party going on up there? <laughs> the going on up there? Who anyway, let the dogs out? Somebody's, <laughs> somebody's dancing up there or Listen, something. If they get past know. the dogs, and I got something down here, too, to keep them hot. But anyway... <laughs> Um, so I, I go walking out, I see this ambulance parked right behind my car. I mean, the, the thing was, you know, I was driving my Suburban and I'm parked right up against those yellow poles, right? Like the, like, oh, not a handicap, but man, that was the best handicap spot anybody could have. And I go walking out there, well, the woman that was two people in front of me, um, somewhere, somehow, she fell and split her head open and she was laying on the parking lot. And I had to wait for like 45 minutes before they would even move the ambulance for me so I could get out of there. Oh, geez. And I was like, I never walked around to see what happened, but I feel like running her over myself. But anyway. So you couldn't go anywhere I because you had a pole in front of you. So you. I, had to, I had to sit in my Suburban with the air on, smoking a friggin' cigar, thinking to myself, I know when I get back to the office it's going to be friggin' chaos, which it was. But anyway. And then I picked up lunch for my lovely bride and a couple of You're other presents. You're Yeah, you never met her. Oh, you, okay. You'd love her if, if you didn't meet her. <laughs> Stellar girl. Miss her. Speaking Hope of you're watching, honey. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so, you know, that was it. So I got back to the office, and I, I think I'm going to get out of there at a reasonable time. Well, that never happened. But anyway, uh, it's all good. So it's just, you know, a lot of running today, three different counties, and... Uh, just I'm, I'm revved up, man. I'm just revved up. But what are the odds, I mean, that you would be parked in front of a pole so you couldn't go forward and that's the how, whole yeah. mess is behind you? I mean, that, it, that's Murphy's Law right the there. The whole mess is not only behind me, it ain't letting me leave either. So, <laughs> Speaking of being at the store, I was at the store today. I know too. that sounds very inconsiderate, but eh, you know what? Yeah. I got places to be. Come on. It's like, why would you park... Right. Why wouldn't you park? There was nobody on the other side of her. I understand it. So why wouldn't you park behind her? Why you got to park behind me? So, well, they weren't thinking about. Well, I mean, it just, wasn't all about you. At they the were time. thinking about that patient, and that's all they were thinking about. That's You're right. exactly right. But anyway, but Dad. I was at the store today, and I don't know. I saw this guy. I don't know. I, I know about you guys, but I can tell when people <laughs> are being judgmental just by looking at them. <laughs> All right, so hey, I love hey, how you hey, I'm do gonna, these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, can I, excuse me, I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta interrupt the show for Room. one minute. I gotta inter- I'm sorry, I, this is important. Uh-oh. I have to interrupt the show. Rich, could you go upstairs and let Ray Low in, please? So Ray Low, oh. Rayon, Cognac yes. is here. Take All that right. with you, take that with you. You might have to beat the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, should you rewind and do that whole thing over? No, no, no. Go no, ahead. No, Sorry, no. Doug. I didn't mean to interrupt. It was important. No, I apologize. The moment's gone. So. Well, it's just it's Feel funny it. because every week Doug does this very cerebral pun about this time in the show, and every time it just goes. Vroom, I want to hear it, Doug. Start right all over. over. <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear. It. <laughs> no, I was just. I was just noting that. You know, I, I saw this guy in the store, right? And there's something about him. I just, I don't know about you guys. I said, but I can tell when somebody's being judgmental just by looking at. Him. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, he, it was just the way he looked. And right. So, well, yeah, why are you prejudging but, people, man? Yeah, oh, I know. that's I, so it's not me. Funny. I was, I was at, I was last week. I was at the local market where I buy a lot of vegetables. 
especially their sweet corn is unbelievable. I won't mention the name. Where did those peppers come from the upstairs? Those those came from this market that I'm just talking oh. about. Are you talking about the ones that I posted for dinner the Hungarian other day? Hungarian peppers? Or those are them? Hungarian sweet. Oh, they look amazing. They're, you, you, I have eight We're growing them. a bunch in our garden, by the way. So, so hey. Hey, you. Welcome. Hey, you want to come sit in? You want to come sit in? Huh? You want to sit in with us? Okay, that's fine. Right, you like scotch? Oh, you by right. yourself? Come well, I like the hat, my friend. <laughs> Let me get you a chair. Not everybody sorry, will, guys, but... Sorry, guys. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the uh, splash screen for just a minute, and we are going to set up Mr. Ray Lowe here, so please stand by. You know what? This would be a good time to do our Royal Havana yes. commercial. Yeah, well, well... So why don't we break into our Royal Havana commercial, and when we'll we come right back, back, we're going to have a special we'll guest. You, we'll see you right after this word. Hang in there, guys. All right. Hi, it's the gang from the Whiskey Roundtable here. We're not here to talk about whiskey. We're here to talk about cigars, Royal Havana Cigars. Royal Havana Cigars is located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. That's 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. Royal Havana Cigar Lounge is tailored to an old 50s, 60s Cuban theme with a friendly atmosphere. Their walk-in humidor is filled with top cigar brands. Trust us, you're bound to find the cigar you're looking for. Royal Havana's friendly atmosphere and comfortable accommodations gives you the opportunity to relax in one of their fine chairs and enjoy a fine cigar. Try one of their house brand cigars. Royal Havana house brand cigars are rolled fresh every week, not to mention the price is right. What else does Royal Havana offer, you ask? Let us tell you. Check out Royal Havana's large inventory of lighters, cutters, butane, lockers for rent, ashtrays, rocks glasses, and coffee cups. And hey ladies, Royal Havana has gift cards and a clothing boutique. And while you're there, check out the humidor for the fine line of cigars tailored to a woman's taste. That's right, we said it. They have cigars that are specially designed for a woman's enjoyment. Visit Royal Havana Cigars at gmail.com for all of Royal Havana's up-and-coming cigar events. They also host public and private events like weddings, family get-togethers, golf outings, wine tastings, just to name a few. So next time you're in the area, stop in at Royal Havana Cigars and see owner Dave Somrock and mention the name Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable and you'll receive 10% off your first cigar purchase. Listen, we know what some of you are thinking. You can get a cigar anywhere. But hey, at Royal Havana, you can only get a good cigar. That's Royal Havana Cigars, located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio, and tell them Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable sent you. Kyle slipped off. All right. All right. We are fine. We are, we are back. Good. We're back. We got our, our, our stuff somewhat together. Oh, shit. Well, oh, and, shit. It, and that explains why. We are a mess was, today. Was going crazy. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Oh, my goodness. That was fun. All right. <sighs> Nothing like doing stuff live, you yeah. know? <laughs> so we have a special walk on tonight. So yes. Why don't you. What's up, brother? Hey. What's going on with you? Hey. Come on. Glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Um, you're going to have to like My friend Chris up, will like his hat as well. Yeah, I, I was, I, you know, <laughs> um, got that Dagon hat on. And for those of you that may not remember, um, this is his product. We did a special show on this. Cognac. Uh, Rayon Cognac. Um, and this, I just got to say, is incredible. Um, to say the as, least. As yeah. somebody that wasn't familiar with cognac, when I had some of this, um, I said, man alive. I mean, this is, has a lot of what I like in whiskey. And frankly, it's got, it's got something else to it. So it's, I mean, it's really outstanding. And um, it's right up there with the best you're going to find. I agree. And Absolutely. I've had some other cognac since. And doesn't measure up so and we're not just saying that yeah nope. not just saying nope. that so um, if you're ever going to try something really extraordinary and this will be a good thing for the holidays particularly I picture uh, you know the, that Thanksgiving Christmas time all that absolutely this is this is really something else to get um, even if you're just a whiskey drinker I, I think if you give this a try you're gonna like it so thank you 
So what's happened since we saw you last? Oh, man, we're just moving along. Things have been going on pretty well for us. Uh, we started some membership drives so people can sort of get on our website. I, I got to do that. Yeah, you got to press me to do that. Yeah. So can order. you what, talk a little bit about that. Membership uh, drives? person can sort of order uh, according to their birthday or holidays or Christmas, and we just auto order, send them a bottle. Just charge your card according to how often they want to drink. Oh, cool. Yeah, some people who don't drink, they'll gift a bottle to their, you know, their father or I, brother. I, just ordered yeah, a bottle. Yeah, yeah. I so, just ordered a bottle. So despite the virus, you know, things are moving along pretty well. We're just hoping. Uh, so you know. I, I would definitely need to get with you because you know I am not computer guy. So no, say so. <laughs> Ronnie, but, uh, is. Ronnie, all right. <laughs> Ronnie, 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 I just ordered a third one for a friend of mine for a gift for somebody else. Okay, thanks. And uh, he is not a cognac guy, but he liked it so much that he wanted to give it to somebody as a retirement gift. Oh, great. Nice. So that's why I ordered it. And uh, I definitely want to get on the train for the uh, once a year oh, beautiful. bottle, if you nice. don't mind. So, nice. But you got to tell yeah. me how I got to do that. Okay, no problem. So, to say, so, so. How, how does somebody get some if they... Just go on the website, uh, lowimportsllc.com, and just sort of walk you through the whole thing. And you can Low, L O W E? L O W, yep. Low Imports. Okay. LLC. LLC. Okay. So we'll, we'll give Fantastic. it a shout out. I need, okay. to get, I need to get me some. That's okay. for sure. It's really, for the really holidays, really particularly. I love it. Yeah. I'm going to make sure. It's I one of those things. Is, so so I have some, some 10 year old Schlievovitz, which is age statement, which never happens. I have some five years and 12 years and stuff like that because I have friends of mine that. Our big Schlievovitz from their country, this and that, but um, that that uh, doesn't compare to to Rayon, but it's an alternative. But I, I can see me drinking that on a regular basis. But you know me, sometimes I like I, I hoard more than I drink. So. You? Yeah. No. Get <laughs> yeah. yeah. the fuck out here! No way. <laughs> So uh, cigar cigar event. You all just saw the commercial Royal Van of cigars. Uh, we have a uh, we have a cigar event next Saturday. Three eight four four eight. Saturday uh, or Sunday? Saturday is a cigar event uh, in Willoughby, Ohio. And uh, Sunday they're doing a golf outing and then uh, uh, Rolling Smoke Barbecue. Uh, we are doing the food like we did last year. They're nice. one of our sponsors. They're one of our sponsors. Ooh. Exactly. So right. if someone wants to go to the golf event, can they still sign up? They can still sign up, but they better do it quick. Okay. So I and think you got to sign up at the Royal Havana. At Royal Havana, you got to pay when you when you sign up. So there's usually four people to a uh, group, a if team. you will, a team, if you will. There's a golf term for it, but I don't know what it is. Foursome. But what's that? Foursome. Force. A foursome. Foursome. Oh shit! Never been in that, any of that. I've been in a lot of twosomes, but not so foursomes. But anyway, you walk right. But I'm working that way. I'm working that way. Okay. If you ever see my girl, you know. If you, ever seen her, if you ever run into his wife. If you ever run into your wife, you know, and her friends. But anyway. Um, <laughs> He's like, bang oh, bang. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Why did I come out here? Why did I come out my boy's here. I got to do both my boys is here. So I got to do what I got to do. And yeah, I'm not surprised that Georgia let you in with your Pittsburgh outfit. I just want you to know. We got we to gotta train her better. Yeah, I train her. Ooh. So. Will she scare you? Yeah. She's, she's <laughs> not happy. So can I say something without being insulting? And this yes. is a very true story. And I'm not being an asshole, okay? So, not this time. Me. No. All right. So we Georgia was a rescue dog, so to say from uh, a woman and her two children who moved up here from Georgia. That's where she got her Oh, name. okay. I think you So, mm -hmm. and I say, and my brother, my brother Steven, I know you're watching the show, who's who's a black mm -hmm. guy as well. Mm -hmm. I've known him my whole life. We're, when we talk about tight, we're tight. So, for whatever reason, Georgia doesn't chase the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> she was raised by black people. And it, white people walking in the house, she wants to kill him. Uh -huh. Some black people walking out and say, hey, come on, let's show where the silverware is. Come on over here. Here's what do you want for dinner? You want the check? I got the checks over here. You know, blah, blah. But anyway, she, she's a good doggy. But, so uh, for those of you that don't know our dogs, uh, we talk a lot about Jimbo and our little English guy, but we have Georgia, who is an American bulldog, and she's about 125 pounds, and she is sheer she, muscle. Yeah. And very intimidating. Um, so this would explain why you were afraid to come in the yeah. house. <laughs> but 
what he's saying. Probably, yeah. She probably barked at you and wagged her tail at the same time. Woo. I don't know. She was hot. He's like, <laughs> gee, come and get me. That's what he said. I didn't know. I'm like, what the hell's going on up there? I jumped said to Rich, I go, you know the, the table by the door? He's like, yeah. So you know the gun's in there, right? He says, yeah. I said, well, you know, then you text me. I'm like, oh, shit. we're in the, right in the middle of something. I go, wait a minute. Got to interrupt the show. Blah, blah, blah. It's my boy's here. And uh, Dick went upstairs and let you in. Too funny. I'm glad you're Too here. Funny. I am this glad is, you're here. This is a great surprise. This is a great surprise. Yeah, yeah, very awesome. exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. So we, awesome, awesome. we are tasting something tonight, are we? Oh, are we? Are we, are we, are we cold, what are we cold, doing cold tonight? tonight, kids? <laughs> Well, you know me, I can't go too long. I know, I know. Um, Thank you for bringing us back into uh, the... uh, Hey, Richard, do me a favor. Would you grab one of them uh, ashtrays and give it to Ray there, please? So he can have something, too. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank Thank you you very very much. much. Grab one for yourself. Thank you, sir. You got one right there. Oh, Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. (laughs) Well, why are you calling him out? I told you. Appreciate it. (laughs) Listen, Ray. We don't even like him. Okay? Yeah. We don't like this guy. He's I don't even know life, why he man. comes here. You know, he saved my life. He saved my life. <laughs> he saved my life. Uh, yeah. And the guy saved you saved the guy's life, and then you want to kick him. What's wrong with you, man? Huh? He's even a Browns fan. Oh. That's why you did because you're a Browns fan. He saw that hat. He, he was saw like, that. Mm, I, don't I don't know. Oh my! I got a text from uh, the Rev. What's he got going on? Hey, G's watching the show. What's up, dog? So I have not checked the, uh, the the talk in the house today. So yes, we've got uh, Derek Polarchik is out there. Hey, what's Debo. up, Debo? We got Steve Williams from Texas. Mm-hmm. We got uh, Jennifer Boggs, of mm-hmm. course. Jennifer, all right. What's up, when girl? When you're coming back on the show, we're gonna keep saying that. We miss you. We do. I still got all your stuff here. I was gonna put it up in auction, but I'll save it for you when you get back. We, we got Craigslist. We got Craigslist. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat Patterson is out there. Patrick, right there. all right. All right. And then we've got your beautiful bride, Shauna. Hey. Shauna. Shauna, we got to talk. How's my girl doing? She's happy now. She's probably so I do want to say a, a quick happy birthday weekend to my youngest, Lindsay, August Lindsay. 8th, and yeah. my son, my oldest, Cameron, August 9th. All right. So, oh, yeah. Oh, did you guys plan that? Yeah, I didn't no. <laughs> That's just when you got the urge? I was just praying they weren't the same day because they would hate that. Right? All right. They would hate to have to share. Or having so. 15 fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday, guys. Happy yeah. birthday. Enjoy. They're all of age, right? So they can yes, enjoy yes, the, they can the yeah, whiskey 16, with their dad. Um, Cameron, as you know, huge fan of whiskey. Yep. Uh, Lindsay, not so much. But she's she watches the show, and she um, she's always curious and is sampling but so far it's not her thing just not hers yeah yeah. i've seen her come in on our youtube um, shows she's she'll she'll get there it took my wife 30 years (laughs) yeah poor shauna (laughs) shauna i i'll make you popcorn to take home okay yeah all right girl it's it's my girl she loves your popcorn and uh, (laughs) most people do so what are we tasting tonight (laughs) We're Here. tasting a soda water. I got some soda, soda water, <laughs> Pellegrino. Very good. Well, my pre shows a little of what next week's ah, whiskey is. But this week, we, we have the Balvenie 17, and Karen's going to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so like I said in the beginning, this is double wood for you ladies, um, which makes it interesting. This is a 17 year, and Balvenie is the only distillery in Scotland that still grows its own barley. And they use traditional floor maltings. And yep. they keep both a coppersmith and a team of coopers on site. And so, why would they need those two things? What would the coppersmith be there? To make the tons? Well, he might do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the stills are made out of copper. And that's I wasn't a ready for thing. a test. <laughs> yeah, pot stills are that's a big her the thing. Test today. <laughs> big oh, thing man. with whiskey. And, of course, the coopers are there to... Uh, make barrels so it sounds I, I didn't know that but that's great so Balvany is doing their own the growing their own grains doing their own malting by the old process and they make their own barrels they're they're fabricating their own I don't know why that's doing that I turned off the sound but. <laughs> that's okay we're going with it tonight. yeah whatever it's all good yeah so anyway that's so, great that's great to know I didn't know that I like that when when 
You've been to Scotland, correct? Yes. Did you visit Belvini? I have not. I have not. So that'll be on the next trip. Hmm. Okay. I haven't been to Isla is my favorite area as far as the whiskeys, and I, I haven't been there. So it, it will be a future trip. So I, I just knew last time we couldn't do everything, so we, uh, we're going to go back. Okay. Because, um, and in fact, I'm going to do a, a whiskey a little bit on that. Okay. One of my future whiskey wizards. So. Well, when I was out there checking for history for the show, they did say that the distillery was temporary, temporarily closed. I'm sure it's all due to this COVID thing going on. So, whenever you plan your trip, just make is it? Sure. I mean, closed to to the public or closed, uh, closed. closed to the public? Yeah, yeah. Closed, closed, closed to the public. public. Yeah. Um, in, in the UK, um, they're very, they're kind of very um, closed off right now. So. So hopefully that this damn thing gets our worth at some point. I'm so. telling you. I'm ready, man. It's killing. Yeah, it's killing. Yeah, me. yeah. We we're all ready for that to be in the in the rearview mirror. So. Yeah, you're not kidding. I wore my first mask today. Yeah. Was it like the Lone Ranger mask or like actual no, mask? No, had some underwear on my face. <laughs> Thank God it was a thong. I had them on backwards. Oh. But anyway, uh, yeah, I was I was sweating like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't don't I won't use go your there. You, yeah. two illegals trying to cross the border. But anyway, he did it. Uh, <laughs> he just went and did it. Anyways, he went there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to the Belvini. So yeah. in 1892, William Grant built the Belvini Distillery on in the abandoned Belvini House. Looks like a, a castle, really. It's 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 pretty cool if you see it. Um, and then on May 1st, 1893, they began their whiskey production. And in 1929, the original maltings are replaced with the traditional malting floor that they still use today. 1962, the master distiller, Dave Stewart, who is there today, he actually started working at the distillery. He was only 17 years old. Mm-hmm. You hear that a lot on, you know, especially like Buffalo Trace, all these younger guys that started, you know, basically sweeping the floor that have become to uh, buy these distilleries. They're all younger guys. They just work their younger way Younger people, so to say. I mean, yeah. so. come on, if you work in a distillery, would you leave? Yeah. No, hell no. Hell no! Uh, you kidding me? Yeah. Don't, right. bo- don't bother me at lunchtime, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm just going to be leaning up against the I mean, the one of them, uh, the guy I was cigar. talking, I forget which one it was we were talking about. It was a Scotch, dis- a Scotch uh, distillery where the kids, uh, he, he was still like 15 years old, at lunch, everybody lined up and got like two two generous pours to have with their their lunchtime meal, and that was just part of the culture. Our culture. Can we make that a tradition today? We should, can yeah, we? Because like I could yeah. use one, like right around one o'clock every day. Well, you work from home. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, I don't well, work from home. Sh- I've yet to work from home. <laughs> I can't do that. Are you kidding me? Anyway, okay. I work. From home, so. But, so uh, anyway, 1962, that's almost 60 years ago. I would never think of drinking during the work day, as far as you know. Well, you would think about it, but you wouldn't actually <laughs> maybe do it. I know I think about it quite often. Um, so the first official bottling of Belvini single malt was released in 1971. 1974, so just 12 years after he started working at the Belvini distillery, David Stewart became the fourth distiller, the f- fourth, fourth master distiller in the distillery's history. Now, was he an MBE? He's an MBE, oh, okay. which is which we were looking up before the show. I said, "What's an MBE?" Um, we thought it was like a master. What did we say? I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, we thought it had something to do with whiskey. It has nothing to do with whiskey. It's an honor that they bestow in Great Britain. Patrons of the arts and philanthropists, basically. Thank you. Um, Thank you. you know, so it's not so like a you're not good enough to be a knight. Yeah. Oh, you're not good enough. I'm sorry. They can toss it. There's a just chest another one around they can, every corner. Yeah, <laughs> they can toss that. Sure this is going. <laughs> Listen, I was a one o point. Two two five, my senior year of high school. But Looks anyway, like huh? drunk, fat, and stupid is no way to get through life. Well, I keep trying. <laughs> I'm sorry. They don't give you the sword on each shoulder. You just you turn around. They give you a I have a lot of kick mo- in the ass. Yeah, a lot of movie references. That was Animal okay. House for those of you that right. don't know. 
So, um, 1983, uh, the master distiller, David Stewart, he first experiments with maturing Belvini in two different wood types in succession, and that would later be called finishing, and it bottled the first Belvini classic. Mm. 1987, Belvini released a 50-year-old whiskey, and it was the first in the industry of that age. And then, we had talked about this. I thought this was going to be a, a, a big, like, ooh, what is this? In 2010, they launched their Ton 1401, and it was the first of the ton range in which David Stewart selected some of his favorite rare casks from their oldest warehouses and married them in a ton. So, for those of you that don't know, and I didn't know until probably about an hour ago, what a ton is... Um, Doug told me that it's basically the tank that they mix the mash in. So think of it as like your single barrels. Um, well, it's a tank, right? It's a, it's a it's, tank. So um, they could be a mash ton, but in this case, it sounds like it's a ton. I just thought it was girls I dated in college. Yes. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I'll take girls I dated in college no, it's for T-O-N. $500. Not T-O-N. <laughs> T-O-N. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> oh, oh, my. Oh, my. Goodness. But, um... Yeah, so it's it's just a ton. I guess that's something they use in... And they, to blend them together. To blend so them together. They would select the best barrels and mix them together. Like, it's a, it's basically a small batch, if you will. There you go. Yeah, so I was thinking it was like this big... And apparently they number them, so... And they do number them. I'm trying to forget. Go ahead. <laughs> you numbered them in college, too, I didn't sure you? I did. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Moving on. So, tonight we are doing the uh, Belvini Doublewood 17-year. Mm. And from what I pulled from their website, they said this technique is at the heart of the Belvini Doublewood. It sees the whiskey matured first in American oak barrels, which impart sweet, soft vanilla notes before being transferred into European oak sherry casks, where the second cask aging adds rich spicy flavors and a depth of fullness and flavor so i'm sure that first cask is a mere ex bourbon first fill sure cask so like most single malt whiskey from scotland and they Very did nice. they did say that the 17 year old is the older sibling of the doublewood 12 year and it shares its honeyed, spicy characteristics, but it's distinctly different. And it's supposed to have some deeper vanilla notes uh, yep. and some hints of green apple, toffee, and uh, richness and complexity to it. So, so I'm, I'm a big fan of the 12 year, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this. So this 17 year, is this something that we've had in the vault for? Uh, about five years, uh, Naomi was still in college and uh, it's funny how I acquired that bottle. Uh, we were, we had just had breakfast um, with Naomi, I think it was her freshman year of college, back in 2012. And uh, so let's, let's redo the math. So uh, that was eight years ago. And uh, we, we went into this corner liquor store, which was kind of like they sold cigarettes and wine and uh, whiskeys, and it wasn't really in a great area, so to say. Um, and we walked in there, uh, I forget who was looking for cigarettes, it might have been my sister or somebody. And uh, they had this, this counter where, they would, where you would cash out in, and it was all glass, and they had all their scotches and good bourbon, so to say, whiskeys in that counter. And it was, you know, the, the standard stuff and then anything that you wanted, they were notorious, as the owner said, uh, the old plastic uh, half-liter bottles, if you will. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they yeah. had all that on the shelf. And if you wanted like a real bottle, then you had to get it from behind the counter. That bottle was the only bottle they had, and it was full of dust. You could tell they never cleaned anything. And uh, I kept looking at that bottle, and I was like, you know, hey, you know, the first scotch I think I ever drank uh, was with Jimmy Falb at the Cigar Lounge. and uh, Jimmy it, Chip. Jimmy Chips. And uh, he had brought 
Balvini, 17 to, it was on a Friday, it was winter time, and he says, you know, he always offered me, long before the show, offered me, hey, try this, G, try this, and I was like, eh, I'm not a scotch guy, he said, man, you gotta try this, so he poured me a little glass of it, and I tried it, and I was like, man, is that good, so we shared the rest of the night on that Balvini 17, so that story came back to mind. So that was kind of your first scotch, scotch that I've ever had. Wow. Okay, so, so it's, it's so, a special night. Then. So the, the bottle at that time, it had a little orange sticker on it. That that in particular bottle right there, what you're looking at right now, had a little orange sticker on it for $126. And uh, I was like, and I don't know if I should buy it or not, but when my sister's going and my wife's going, just get it, just get it. I, so I say to the guy, hey, could, do you mind, uh, can I see that Balvini 17? So he has to, like, five minutes, he's pulling out all this stuff <laughs> behind to get the to counter it? to get to the counter. It was to get to the bottle, excuse me. And he brings the bottle up. And I said, let me see. He goes, oh, hang on. And he's got this towel and he's <laughs> wiping it down. And uh, he says, uh, I've had this for years. Nobody's ever even looked at it. And I said, uh, I said, it says $126. What do you want for it? He said, eh, I think I paid like 110 for it. You want it? I think, and I'm like, eh. Karen and my sister are like, no, we, we want it. We want it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. So I bought it. The rest is history. So that bottle is is about two thirds gone. And it's that I've had that bottle for a long so time. So it kind of marks the start of your collection. It did. It so, did mark. Yeah. Oh wow. Did. Okay. So, well, this is. So here we are. This is honor. I'm honored. So this is the so. first Balvini 17 that I ever bought eight years ago, and uh, we've opened it and tried it, and I, I've had it several times, and uh, as far as scotches go, uh, on a scale of one to uh, on, on the one through five favorite scotches, that's. I have to say that's my number one. Just okay, for well, we'll, fact for we'll, nostalgic. But we'll, we'll come wait, back. We'll get your rating a little we'll bit. We'll go. Here, <laughs> He's okay. the gun. Easy dog. Easy. 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 Don't scare yeah. me on that one. Right, Reel so. us back in. All right. So no, anyway, that's great. So that's, that's, that's a great, great story. story. Very well, true great story. story. Very Anything true story. else, Karen? Or are we gonna get into? No, this? that's it. I thought we would just get in to do some tasting. All right. All right. See what it's all about. Pass those bad boys out. Pass that to my boy Ray. Pass those out. Okay, so we have a sip of something. This is good. Sorry. That's the. Uh, is that the. <laughs> oh, sorry. Something in our throats. Okay. okay. Pubic, pubic hair in my throat. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. Anyway. So. Well, if, if you'd leave the okay. dogs alone, uh, maybe. I'm oh, sorry. Get on myself. So this really, what it strikes right away is the color on this. Is the it's deep, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The deep amber color in this, which is beautiful. Got, it doesn't have the red that a lot of bourbons have. It's just this nice, very um, amber bourbon. Yeah, yeah which, I, which I find gold. unusual for a scotch because typically scotches are lighter in color. They're yellow. Yeah, they're golden. This is a deep amber. And that, that of course, is coming from that first fill bourbon cask that it spent a lot of time in. It smells fantastic. Yeah. It smells like a bourbon, actually. No sleep. What do you think, Ray? Yeah. I, uh, I get wow. some grass and yeah. earth out of it. I get uh, get some caramel out of it. I get some... Uh, I guess I would say I well, get a I, little... There's a cherry get, cask out of it. I get a little, yeah. little wine out of it. I get some, like, cherry, and I also get banana. Um, I, I see cherry. I definitely smell the cherry. I see caramel. Mm -hmm. I definitely get the cherry and the caramel on this. I do too. There's a lot of fruit in there. There is a lot of fruit in it. It, 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 it you know, what's nice about it is uh, I don't get a lot of ethanol out of it at all. No. No. It's very smooth on the nose. It's very, it's very enlightening on the nose, actually. What's the, uh, the proof on this? Did we? Uh, I don't. I didn't. Uh, I don't remember. Can you just? It's probably on the bottle somewhere. I'm sure it is. I apologize. No, that's okay. While you glasses. Dave bought me these glasses. The Santa Claus glasses. I'm definitely I getting banana, guys, and um, maybe. Are you definitely getting? Eighty-six. 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 So that's about what single malts typically. Yeah. yeah. Eighty-six tonight. Eighty-five tonight. Range. 
so when I was reading the specifics about the 17 year, it talked about green apple, and the more that I'm smelling it, that is coming out to me. But I, I maybe it's I get a lot of fruit, but I don't know if I get green apple. Maybe maybe get, maybe a hint yeah, of definitely apple. get it, yeah. and I get some banana still on the kind of later on in the nose. I may get it on the palate, but I don't get it on the nose. Yeah, let's see what we let's right, see right, what we, we get on the palate, shall we? So let's let's hit it, kids. Oh my! Ooh, ooh. Wow. Mm. It's okay. dry. It is dry. Um, I get so I get a lot of oakiness out of it. Um, um, cherry. I still get some I cherry get on the cherry. palate, but um, the caramel. Yeah, ooh. caramel or actually, what is it? The hell is it? It's like what the hell is it? <laughs> Y'all gonna laugh at me, but I'm gonna say raisin. Or I can get like graham cracker. That's what it reminds me. <laughs> So, so mm. let me read the, the nose. They're right. saying um, it's an elegant, complex oak, vanilla honeyed sweetness with a hint of green apple. Honey. And then another nose said uh, a good quality donut complete with icy <laughs> sugar and gooey <laughs> strawberry jam. Okay. I don't know. I don't it's get just that. full of all kinds of heavy good, dollop, yeah. good stuff. I mean, heavy dollop of vanilla in the form of raisin ice cream. Drizzled with honey, yeah. and of course, oak, fresh timber, and autumn leaves. That's the nose. I get oak. I get all that. Um, I, I do. I do get. The, I did get the, some raisin on the on the uh, nosing. Um, I, I don't. Uh, I, I could kind of. I could kind of feel maybe a little bit. Taste a little bit of that honey. Wow. But not uh, pronounced, so to say. This is. Um, this is good. This is very very good. Gee. I, I, it's really. I good. can't. Uh, there's so much going on there, and it's all. Good. There, there is such the the spice is so low, wow. just enough to let you know it's there. Very enjoyable, very enjoyable. That I mean, again, uh, I'm not a Scotch guy, and and I'm still learning scotches. Um, it it was the first Scotch I ever had, so to say, and uh, wow, and and Your it still still tastes as I remember it really does. I think, I think the only problem with starting there is it's awful hard to live up to. It's <laughs> what do you think, Ray? Right? I think it's great. Uh, yeah. Start to appreciate the finer liquors hanging out with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what we're about here yeah. on the whiskey right. routine. So, so the, after the show, we have some things to try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always. All scotches. <laughs> we're going to try some all scotches, okay? Okay. Again, if you want to be on the show, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. But right, after I mean, the I mean, show, I mean, it's I mean, always I mean. a great time here on the Whiskey Round Team. Yes. Uh, there's usually a few things we get to taste. And, and it's a good thing we don't videotape some of this stuff. Cause <laughs> yes, we don't. It's a very good thing. So, uh, so, um, so the, like on, on the taste, the notes that, that I found was that it was sweet with dried fruits Sherbet spice, sherbet. Okay. okay. Spice. Okay. Toasted almonds and cinnamon. Graham crackers. That's where I was yeah, getting. Yeah. Cinnamon. Okay. Uh, layered with a richness of creamy toffee, and traces of oak and deep vanilla. Yeah, and amen. The oak and goes without saying because it's I a get the creaminess either. out of it. That you yeah. said that I definitely get the creaminess because it, it is so smooth and pleasuring. Yeah, that very. It's like a good cheese. There's like no really bite in it whatsoever. <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? I did. No, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> so, Karen, I want to know what you thought of the palate. What did you taste? What did I think of the palate? I tasted um, the first thing that I thought of, and I said it was, it's dry to me. Um, so, what I try to compare it mm. to is like drinking sure. a wine, and there's like dry wines and sweet sure. wines. Sure. Sure. Um, this leaned more towards the dry wine to me, and because of that, I picked up a lot more of the oakiness mm -hmm. from it. Um, I didn't really get the sweet or the raisin. I didn't get the fruit on the palate. I got more of that oaky. I definitely got the oaky dryness, but yeah. um, it's it's really good, man. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's okay. It's well, good. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's very different from the Islas that I really like, but it is uh, exceptional in its own way. And that's what I love about the different Scotch whiskey regions. I mean, they each produce something kind of unique in, it, in within their kind of um, 
zone, if you will, of uh, similarity. But this is, yeah, this is. Um, that's what I, I th think. Like a Glen Glen Morangi, right? Right. Um, it has a lot of those same qualities. Of, um, what do you think, Ray? It's nice. I think it's smooth. It's, it's not strong. It's it's good. It goes down very. Very well. enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That that's definitely a. Uh, a steak and a cigar right there. Yeah, man. yeah. A know, steak man. and a cigar. Amen. So I was, you know, it's interesting, Doug, you were talking about the, the regions and the different tastes that you get. I was just curious if, if we knew, and I was trying to really quickly look at the region that this comes from. Um, um, yeah, I think where it's a, I thought it was a highland, or is it a space like, Greg, uh, what's it say on the What's it saying there? Doug, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't do my. Yeah, I know. I didn't, know. I didn't I'm even check. That I, don't I really remember. didn't do my. Uh, but oh, Maine, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, it's made by the Cleveland Department. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, it's in Dufftown. Got some. Okay, it's Duff space, Town, it's a it's space, a space side. Side. I, I should know. We stayed space in Duff Town when we, when we hiked the Space Side Trail on the high low. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I, I knew that. Okay. So, Space Side, and uh, uh, next week on the Whiskey Wizard, we'll talk about all those different single malt scotch regions. So, but, awesome. Okay. So, uh, let's rate it, kids. Uh, one question. Okay. Uh, Shauna is asking, is fruit unusual in a scotch? Um, not really because of kind of the, it's very common to age a single malt scotch whiskey in um, other types of casts or finish them in port or, you know, uh, Madeira and other type of wine casts to pick up. And that's usually where you get that dark fruit. Correct. And all that stuff. Now the vanilla, kind of a lot of those caramels, and those come from their time, of course, in the ex bourbon right. first fill casts, so. right? Which is very common in in all bourbons. You know. But now thanks, Shauna, for your question. Thanks. You saved yourself. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> you saved yourself. All right. So well, let's, yeah. Let's rate this up, man. Okay, Big G. We're gonna start with you. I'm gonna go four point two. Oh, look 4. at you. Four point two. That's a high big G rating. Karen, who's not a single malt. You know, I'm not, I'm not but, a single uh, malt. I'm going to go 3.8. 3.8. Well, and and um, I don't have an explanation at this time, but that's where I'm... Um, I, I just okay. feel it. <laughs> I, I think this is an excellent, excellent whiskey. So I'm, I'm going with a 4.35. Oh, shit. oh, look at you okay, rounding up man, to the, okay. the hundredth decimal point. Mm. Okay, Ray, it's up to you. Now. So this is our scale of one to five. And five being the best. The best. best yeah, can, see, I've always tasted scotch and thought they taste like fuel. Yeah. And the minute I taste this, it sort of turned my whole Change. thing around. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I would have to say 4.5. Nice. Oh, my God. This Very good. Nice. I love it. This kind of sold me on scotch, period. Oh, okay. wow, there you go. My That's good buddy, Mark Sorrell, he, he, he goes to Scotch meetings, and he's a connoisseur, yeah. so he, he'll probably try to buy a house by here. Seriously, though, the I think the as, a, as a lover of single malt Scotch that I am, you can see why I liked your cognac. Yeah, right. Can you, you see some exactly. of the similarities Definitely there? similarities. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. In, the, the complexity. Absolutely. And, yeah. The finer liquors I love. I'm starting to love. I just, I just didn't like the cheap stuff I was drinking. Yeah, me. that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what do you mean? All right. All right, whip out the BV me. for Ray. Oh, <laughs> shit. He ain't drinking no BV here. There ain't no BV here. <laughs> ain't no oh, BV my here. God. Just kidding. <laughs> this is great. Isn't well, that good um, stuff? Um, it is. It really is good stuff. I guess it's time for... Are we going to do the wizard? We're going to do the we're wizard. Gonna do the uh, we're going to talk a little. We're going to finish up um, in this episode. We're finishing up our discussion on the whole whiskey making process. So this is we're kind of finishing that that whole series up. So here we go. All right. We'll see we'll you in a few right minutes, back, kids. All right. <laughs> whiskey. There you go. This yeah. Is good. What's, what's, what's this, man? 
What is that? What Same thing. Oh, I say that was good. Pour it in your glass. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. It, when, when you I dro- didn't know you could. I really sent you these glasses. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. You smell these. If I put, uh, if I good. poured that Balvini in a regular Scotch glass. You would not get the same flavor right. you mean or a, the like same a, smell. Like a the regular rocks glass. A <laughs> of light, air, earth, and fire. Last time we talked about barrel maturation, the last major part of constructing a great whiskey. But we're not quite done yet. We still need to get that good juice into the bottle, sealed, and on the shelf where we, its appreciators, can encounter it. So tonight's Whiskey Wizard segment we're just going to talk about what happens after the whiskey and the cask is ready, and it's time to move to the final few steps. Now the barrel or barrels are selected as per the desired product. Single barrel, part of a traditional blending of barrels, or as part of a small batch of select barrels. Most barrel bungs are made of poplar because it expands when wet and keeps a good seal throughout the aging time. Maker's Mark uses walnut bungs as they finish to taste, so they open it more and it's less likely to split with repeated opening and closing. As the barrel is dumped, it is typically gross filtered to remove char and any solids such as small pieces of wood or the bomb. Used barrels won't be used again for bourbon. Most will end up being used for aging scotch whiskey or ale aging. I love this symbiosis between the American and Scottish whiskey industry. If bottling a single barrel, it will be prepped for bottling as is at barrel strength. However, different types of filtering may be, be deployed. Otherwise, it will be mixed with other barrels and gauged in a gauging vat where water is added to bring it to the desired proof. Often distilled or purified water is used as not to alter the flavor. For the case of blended whiskeys, this is also where neutral grain spirit might be added to lighten the flavor and add consistency, where that is a primary objective. Lately, some distillers have begun using versions of the Solera process, a blending method typically used for the production of sherry and port wines. In theory, new whiskey is continually being added to older whiskey to blend it for the final bottled product. Over time, the blend is always getting, on the average, a little bit older. The Glenfiddich 15 single malt whiskey and Hill Rock bourbon are just two such examples. Most of the bottling is done on automated lines. The bottles are rinsed first with bourbon, not water, to maintain its proof. Here's the line at Old Forester. Bottles are filled, sealed, and then, of course, they are labeled. Unlike wine, whiskey does not age in the bottle. So a whiskey bottled in 1977 should be the same today, assuming the seal is not broken. Stoppers are traditionally made of cork, cork oak to be exact, which is grown almost exclusively on the Iberian Peninsula of Europe, mostly in Portugal. Cork structure lets some air exchange, which can help wines develop more complexity over time in the bottle. While not as needed for whiskey, a cork stopper lends to a more elegant and satisfying bottle opening experience. Perhaps most boldly stated with the Blanton's pewter top cork stoppers, each being one of its seven different letters in the spelling of Blanton's, with their eight different figures representing the full racing thoroughbred stride. Of course, more screw top whiskeys are still appearing, such as the Old Forester, Hunter Proof, Wellers, and many others. Not that I'll look down on a whiskey solely because it has a screw top, but there's certainly something more elegant and satisfying with opening a cork stoppered bottle. So I guess this is the end of the end of our journey through the whiskey making process. Although there's so many things left to talk about where whiskey is concerned, I'd say it's almost infinite. Some things in the future include the chemistry responsible for the flavors and aromas in whiskey, as well as an August focus on Scottish whiskey regions and the unique aspects that characterize my beloved single malts. Also, we'll get into some more history as we'll take a look at America's Whiskey Rebellion. 
We'll also look to see if we can get into featuring some of the area's best speakeasy establishments and perhaps even heading to some local watering holes and putting the cast through some blind taste testing. So there's much still that the wizard plans to conjure up. This is Doug Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard, for the Whiskey Roundtable, and now back to the live show. All right. All right. Thank you. And I'm sorry. That was totally my bad on the on the audio for that. I um, something came up. There were two media sources, and never mind. Well, it happens. Well, it's it's a live it's, show. It's been that but, kind um, of day. That, <laughs> kind of wrap, kind of day. Day. <laughs> that kind of wraps up our whole series on the, the whiskey making process. Right. So, so um, you know, as I mentioned, there's some other things to look forward to that are coming up. So. Right. Um, enough of that. So right. we got some news. So uh, we're going to come back to the news. Oh, so, okay. uh, so Ray's here today. Uh, yeah. We're going to revisit uh, Rayon Cognac. As yeah. you see, we put the bottle up here for everyone to see the Rayon Cognac. Very, very, uh, very good. Anybody that missed this show when we when these guys came in and did the show here, this this is a great great product. Very good. Uh, I, I like it. It's, it's a great cognac. It drinks similar to a bourbon. It's very, very good. And uh, I just want to revisit it, if that's okay with everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I mean, I think after having had the Balvenie 17, mm -hmm. I think it's a good comparison because I thought it had a lot in common with a lot of good single malts. I agree. Definitely not like the Islas, which are very peaty, but um, this is a good comparison. Um, it has kind of that. I think it has a lot of complexity, a lot of fruit. Sure. Um, and uh, it's not like we said when we first did the show on it. It's not grapey at all. There's nothing nope. whiny nope. about it. Uh -uh. It's much more to me like like a good whiskey. So absolutely, it is. And even um, you know during the break we were talking and, and, and Dick's over there. He's like, eh, I don't do cognac. I'm but like, come on, try it. He tried it and he says. That's good. That yeah. shit's good. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's excellent. There's no way around. It is. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna run I'm gonna run up in it right now. Let's do it. Easy now, Hoss. It smells just like a yeah. Scotch whiskey. Just like it. Oh my god. I I mean. Ah. Look at the legs on that. It is so good. Oh. But it's um, so good. Yeah, but it's. Um, is that what Ray brought? That's yes. Like, that's, that's Ray's. That's Ray's. That's, that's his product. Ray's, uh, that's you're his product. Right. You're all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm Thank glad you. I saved your life. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I wasn't going to save your life, but okay. I thought there might be whiskey involved. Come on in. <laughs> Back down, Georgia. <laughs> no, but this um, this is every. I would after a great meal. Amen. I would have Amen. this just like I would have a great single malt with the, somebody. The, this is something really special, something to share with friends. The, the last a, part of the night, this is yeah, where you exactly. need to be. A great I mean, cigar. I've, I've or, said it a hundred times. Yeah. This is where just, you need to be at the end of the night, really. It's a great yeah. product. You guys did a great job. Thanks, thanks. You really, really did. Appreciate it. We Kudos had, to you guys, man. We went through 30 different uh, manufacturers until we, we chose these guys. So yeah. it worked out well for us. You did. It sure That's did. That's what it did. It sure did. It really did. I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's and if you guys didn't see that episode, go, you know, it's, it's on our, you can go back to the YouTube site and you can find it. It's, 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 it's one, one of, the, of our most one watched. Of our watched, most watched yeah, it's episodes. Yeah, one of our most so watched episodes. Watched shows. So, yeah. So. Great. Yeah. That's cool. I'm That's cool. Awesome. These bought retail 170 You can get them. $170. Ship right worth, to your house. It's worth, but it's worth every penny. Worth every penny you. of it, man. Worth every penny of it. So uh, we de definitely want to get on the, uh, Get on the list for uh, you. Got to help me with that. Okay. So, no problem. But uh, definitely would, uh, you know, Dave gave me that bottle uh, to uh, for you guys for the show, okay. and uh, then you brought a bottle, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so I, I topped that bottle off. But uh, you know, it's going to be one of those things. You know, we're we're getting into fall and different things like that. Football. I'm going. I'm. Going Let's hope there's to bring that bottle this year. out. So. That's that's a great. I can't wait. I hope uh, who's ever going to come over tomorrow, uh, which I won't mention any names, but uh, we're definitely going to pull that bottle. Well, we're going to pull that bottle out first. <laughs> yeah, the other bottle, and then uh, we're going to work our way to that. But uh, yeah, well worth the money. 
Wow. The product is stellar. You guys did a great job. Thanks. Definitely. You yeah. really, really did. Yeah. I Putting the CLE on today. the map. I love I, it. I, I, hey, you're nice. going to do a product. You sure did it right. I, uh, I appreciate the yeah. uh, the surprise guest, man. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. That's, That's awesome. awesome. What a great surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right, well, we're going to get to the news, kids. Yeah, what do you got, G? Do you want to um, start? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to start here. Hang on one second. I'm going to try to start. You know, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little, uh, you know, a little crazy. Here so while you're doing that, this is, um, you know, we talked about this taste like the whiskey. And, and here where I said the Belvini was dry, mm. this is sweet. Yeah. And it's smooth. Yeah, but it's and not it's like just, it's not like it's sweet not like you think. Sweet. No, not no. At all. nothing. Um, let me take it. that back. There's no bitterness to it. Yeah. Everybody that, he, he, and I won't mention their names. Anybody that's ever tried that product, uh, and I say this wholeheartedly, who, who does doesn't even want to hear about cognac, whatever. Rich was a prime example today that has tasted this as. Oh my God, that's really good. I think I mean, anybody, it's shocking good. Anybody you know? who likes whiskey, whether you are a bourbon fan, you like rye, or you like scotch, um, or all of them, but you're gonna you're gonna like that. I, that's what I think. Very if you don't like whiskey, I don't know, but um, I mean, you know, it has so much to offer. So. And the I, texture of it is. It's creamy. Yeah, it's, it is. It's got it, a great mouth feel. It's, it's good. It's, it's really good. Everything about it is fantastic. Yeah. If I have to thanks. rate it, if I had to rate a cognac, it'd be a five. I ain't Thank you. Lie, I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie thanks, to you. Thanks. It's good. You know, my really my good. brother in Texas, Don Lee, all you guys down there, uh, Justin, everybody down there in Texas. I'm telling you, get a bottle of this. You're going to be very, very happy. With Matt this. Sosa said, save me some. So, ah. so for everybody, one more time, if somebody wants to get a bottle, what do they do? Uh, they'd be uh, rate low, low imports LLC.com. Go right to the website, right. come straight to your house. Low imports LLC.com. Okay. And you ship all states to all We're in 33 states as, as of right now. Some states just don't do liquor by mail, like Georgia and some right. other things, but. Yeah, a lot of I got people. my bottle. Yeah, yeah. I got my bottle. Big, big just had one sitting right to the house what, a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. I got my bottle yeah. a couple days ago. Yeah, but we're 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 on the shelf licensed in Florida, New York, New Jersey, and California. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Beautiful. Very nice. Beautiful. Thank. All thank right. You. Thank so, you. So, G, you got some news? Are you All right, I do. Now? No. All right, I'm ready, man. <laughs> it's been that kind of day. You know what I'm saying? It's been that kind of day. You you, you heard the story about me at Lowe's today. But anyway, we won't go there. But anyway, uh, Woodford Reserve has unveiled their $1,000 mint julep. $1,000 mint julep? $1,000 mint julep. For a drink? Julep. For a drink. That shit better be good. Yeah. yeah. It ain't no cognac, that's for sure. <laughs> but anyway, with Woo! Kentucky Derby just a month away, uh, we're past that. Um, well, aren't they doing are it they, in September this year? Are, are they, they going to do it in they, September? Are they going to? Oh, I thought they? that they were doing it in September. Okay, my bad. Po we need Pokey. Uh, hey. My friend Pokey is the horse expert. Pokey horse in the front, expert. stick him in the rear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no, uh, you didn't. <laughs> hey, Cameron. Hey, Lauren. Good hey, to see what's you. Up, kids? Cameron, when are you coming home, bud? You mixing up some he good drinks for us? might come home uh, before too long. All right, that's good. We'd like to have you both like come to, in I, on another I'd like show. to... I'd like to uh, uh, tag team him with Steve Crooks. Okay. Okay, and the, yeah, and that the, would be good. the special drinks. I think that'd be a great idea. All right, uh, with Kentucky Derby just a month away, Woodford Reverb Reserve, uh, sorry kids, uh, has unveiled their annual $1,000 mint julep. Wow. This year, <laughs> this year is commemorative, uh, the 50th anniversary of the Derby's first female jockey, Diane Crump. Crump has rode a horse named Fathom in the 1970 Kentucky Derby, finishing 15th. Uh, but uh, Donnelly, really? Um, I'm sorry. We're kids. trying to do a show, Donnelly. Uh, really? Summoning her place in uh, Derby <laughs> history. <laughs> the Cup showcase etchings of her skills and from the race, as well as iconic twin spire spires uh, of Churchill Downs. They will arrive uh, at your doorstep nestled in a walnut box lined with a replica of her turquoise and white skill silks. Excuse me. I have a lot to drink today. <laughs> at the, at the, at yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> and I have a lot to do tomorrow. 
So, <laughs> and more to do tonight. <laughs> Just 146 cups are available for sale. Come running. Come, come, yeah. uh, the 146 running of the Derby Cups 1-25 are gold-plated and sell for $2,500. <clears throat> while Cups 26 through 146 silver-plated and sell for $1,000. Proceeds from the sale will benefit the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. Nice. Very nice. Uh, there we go. Okay. So the so. Kentucky Derby is September 5th? All I right. Well, oh, my God. That's starting a high low. What's that? Pokey. What's that? Labor Day weekend? It looks like Labor Day weekend. Yeah. we got to have some kind of betting or some kind of event around that. Yeah, so make a note. It's a Saturday. Saturday, September oh, okay. 5th. Okay, high low Saturday, no doubt. That's my sister's oh my birthday, gosh. September 5th. Try to forget. Wow. All right. <laughs> when's, when's, when's Labor Day? Uh, uh, so six. September. Or that it's got to be the 8th. Eight. It's got to be yeah. the 8th. So yep. That, so that weekend. Or maybe it's the 1st. I don't know. It's no, it's, the first uh, it's as late this year as it can be, so oh, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, it's on Labor Day? It's like the 7th. It's seventh, on Labor Day. The 7th yeah. or something. It's on Monday. I guess the 7th will be the latest it could possibly be. You know, let me just double week. check, but I don't, I don't think, know. I don't think it uh, tells it's, me the date here. We are a hot mess. I'm I telling know, you. Are are I think the 5th, so. Right. You would think it's our first show. The 7th is the Labor Day. Monday, yeah. 7th seventh is Labor Day. Oh, so that weekend. So the 5th is, it's always a Saturday, right? Yeah, so the 5th is a Saturday. Maybe it's that All right, so high low Saturday will be the Kentucky Derby. Oh, my God. Pokey, that's got to be. That's so. okay. This Rayon Cognac just okay. took my brain cells. I know. This is all I can think about right now. It is. It is. <laughs> it. Uh, it, it's a, Who can it's do math at a, a time like It's joy in a glass. Let's just it, really <laughs> it really is. It really is. So I have some news. So Lock, Lock Lomond Whiskies <laughs> launched their European, it's contagious, European tour uh, UK swing range. So they have all these whiskey, five whiskies related to golf and the mm. European golf tour. So... Um, they've got the the Hero Open, uh, which is a luscious malty with honeyed sweetness there, and the fruits of pineapple and mango and a touch of uh, grape juice. So oh, that sounds interesting. The Betfred British Masters, fresh and slightly tangy, peach and orange zest, then a caramel sweetness with a creamy oak vanilla and gentle cinnamon and clove. It's finished. So then the English Championship, sweet and fruity with lemon zestiness. The UK Championship opens sweet and fiery with peat. And there's some salted caramel in there for uh, those of you that like that. And then there's the Wales Open in Celtic Classic. Rich peat ah. smoke intermingled with spicy ground ginger and stewed apples. So there you Ooh. go. Uh, lock. Lomond. Um, I have not had a Loch Lomond uh, single malt, so that's on my list. All right. What is, can you tell me what that entails or no? The Loch Lomond, I mean, what type of... So like uh, a, a very peaty smoky or... Well, I'm assuming that's probably a Highland. Um, okay. But um, so it, it's probably going to be lightly peated. Okay. Spicy, you know, typical Highland. Gotcha. So. gotcha. Okay. Um, and then there's uh, Wolf Burn Scotch Whiskey has two a release of a pair of new uh, single malts. Um, I've never had Wolf Burn either. Uh, you said Wolf Burn. Wolf Burn. Wolf Burn. Okay. W O L F B U R N. They're 2020 May spelled M E Y. Highland Games postponed special. I guess the Highland Games were postponed. They were supposed to happen in May, but due to COVID, they were postponed. So it's called the 2020 May Highland Games Postponed Special. So, and they're from the Stills 2020 Summer Edition. So um, two single malts that are um, out there that came out this month. So, um, so uh, I was going to mention um, that one of my favorite casts that it's called Whiskey Wednesdays. It's a British guy that does a, a tasting every Wednesday, and then he covers it. He covered your uh, Wild Turkey Long Branch, Karen. My and, favorite. Uh, he said the first time he had it, it was after three hours of tasting at a whiskey event, and so he didn't find it very special, but he, he tried it with a fresh palate, and he did really like it. He said it's, uh, he thought it was more like a, a Jack Daniels whiskey to him than it was 
like a typical wild turkey. So, hmm. but he really did like it. So anyway, good. good I thought product. I'd bring it up because I know that's one of your favorites. So uh, one of my, it is my. Favorite. Okay, <laughs> uh, Jack Daniels has yeah. released. Um, this is ba- uh, from August fourth, a limited edition Eric Church single barrel Tennessee whiskey. Oh, a little country music. Yeah, there. so the you know again uh, in keeping with the celebrity thing because of course Long Branch is uh, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, <laughs> Look at you. Uh, you just Jack, wrote that shit, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Jack Daniels. Uh, this uh, this sounds like a, a really good whiskey. So. Um, you know, again, the uh, it's a very uh, small batch, and um, looks like they put a lot of effort into making sure this was a special whiskey. Is you said that's Jack Daniels? Usually, small yeah, batches. Yeah. Small batches tend to be a little bit spicy, don't they? Or is it just me? Uh, my experience is yes, but yeah, I agree. you know, small batches seem to be a little bit spicy. You know, more traditional. You know, I mean, I can't, I can't. Uh, you know, set him for that, but every small batch I've ever had has a little bit more spice to it than a standard whiskey or a standard bourbon. So definitely more flavor. Yeah, definitely more flavor. I did sure. find a lot of detail about um, what's unique about this, but um, maybe we'll cover that next time. But okay. it just it just was released, so awesome. So we'll find out some more. Johnny Walker celebrates their oh. 200th anniversary. Are you listening, Jimmy Chips? With Jimmy four Chips. exclusive releases, including oh. a new bottle design and three newly crafted whiskeys. Yeah, how much uh, is that a bottle? Oh. oh my God, they don't even give you that here. But Johnny Walker Blue Label 200th Anniversary Limited right. Edition Design, the Johnny Walker Blue Label Legendary Eight, the Johnny Walker and Son Celebratory Blend, and the Johnny Walker's and Son Bicentennial. Blend. Yeah. So, um, if you're a Johnny Walker flan, 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 <laughs> fan. I'm a flan. I'm a good. Hey. Uh, check this those out. Hey, go the flan. See, that's what I was thinking. Blue. That's why I said flan. Blue, <laughs> blue flan. Okay. You combined your words. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, okay. Sorry. So that's anyway. So um, again, it's a it's a blended whiskey, but um, I've had some very good blended whiskeys. Absolutely. Amen. Yep. Amen. Absolutely. All right, so I guess we're coming coming to the end. So any uh, last parting words? Well, uh, we do want to say don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. If you've not already, follow us on Facebook. If you have questions, comments, or if you want to be a guest on the show, or if you want to sit in the audience like Dick, um, you know, send us a, drop us a line at the Whiskey Roundtable at gmail.com or or uh, comment on Facebook, let us know, and we'll, we will accommodate you if we the, can. Yeah, yeah, and the best place to get a hold of us is on Facebook, I think. Amen. It's uh, where we check in most frequently, and we try to keep all of us have access to it. So um, if you do reach out to us there, one of the three of us will definitely Absolutely. I need to learn on. how to do it. I have answered a couple things, but I would like to... To learn more about it, I apologize. I'm like the worst at everything on the show. Okay, don't ask me nothing. Ask me what we're drinking. I'll tell you what it's all about. But don't ask me to get on the. Greg, you're the best at being you. That's the, right. I, that's why I have these cats right here. Right. <laughs> so um, before I drink some more rayon cognac, uh, let's do a. Uh, our closing quote. Okay. Yes, I love these. So this comes from George Best, and if you don't know who that is, he was he's one of the top five uh, English soccer players of all time. Um, he was uh, he in the late '60s, early '70s, he was a superstar. He's still known as the best dribbler of all time. Okay. And I don't think it, it has to do with his fondness for drinking, but it was more about his soccer. <laughs> And he was a drinker, and he was also known as quite the playboy. That so, doesn't make him bad. To this extent, um, uh, he said, and I quote, In 1969, I gave up women and whiskey. It was the worst 20 minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and a boy. That's all for the show. <laughs> all right, kids. Hey, thanks for putting up with all of our mess-ups today. It was like the first show we ever did. Oh, but, it's all uh, good. It's all good. Ray. Thanks for coming out, brother. So so the product is unbelievable. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you very much. The product right. is fantastic. Buy it. Yeah. Check it out. You're going to love it. So especially the holidays are coming. Get on that website. 
Which is? LowImportsLLC.com. Check it out. You're going to love it. All right. We'll catch you cats next week. Until then, drink responsibly. Be safe. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Dr. Dunbar. Amen. All right. (laughs) All right. So long, everyone. Have a great weekend. Have a good weekend, man. Bye-bye. If whiskey stops your working every bar in town, Closing their doors, shutting down Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts Cause nothing knows a pain like bourbon or scotch Oh no, oh no, no If whiskey, whiskey stopped working Where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money Trying therapy Whiskey stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working, oh, whiskey stopped working, whiskey stopped working. Poor Jack D would be out of a job, James. Tennessee. If whiskey, 